transgression hath brought wretchedness and death. So the sacrifice of Christ will bring life and immortality. All that was lost by the first Adam will be restored by the second. And ever since that declaration, the devil has been planning, scheming, plotting, conniving on what he could do to stop the plan of salvation and to disrupt the coming of Christ. From the very beginning, he made it clear that the instruments that he would use would be corruption, defilement, and murder. So, because Abel was godly, and because he could not give him through corruption, because he could not defile him, he murdered him. He used Cain, his own brother. How horrible it is when one family member kills and destroys another family member. He would not stop with Abel. Because he went through Abel because he thought that the Redeemer was going to come through the bloodline of Abel. He understood when Jesus, when God made that command, he knew that his kingdom would not last long if he didn't do something to stop it. And he thought the bloodline was coming through Abel. So he had him killed. That's what he does. And he hasn't stopped. 900 years before the coming of Christ, the devil tried again. This time, he went to the king of Israel by the name of Ahab. And the devil had a plan. And the plan was he was going to use a woman to destroy Israel and cause Israel to become corrupt. Jezebel fit him to a tee. She came in and the devil used her because she was crafty. She was malicious. She was revengeful and she was cruel. She worked Ahab like no woman ever had worked a man before. She had him eating from the palm of her hand. She controlled him to the extent that he couldn't even function on his own. And the devil used her. He used her to corrupt and to devile. How did he do that? She instituted to Israel their worship. She instituted the worship of the groves. In fact, she had 450 prophets for Baal and 400 prophets for Ashtoreth in the groves. And she caused all of Israel to worship the images Baal and Ashtoreth and caused great heartache in all of Israel. But I'm not here to talk about her. I'm not here just to talk about her. Because what she did was corrupt Israel. But she also persecuted God's people. She was responsible for killing God's prophets and his priests. Notice how the devil is working again. He uses murder. He uses corruption. And he uses defilement. Keep those three in mind. He uses murder. He uses corruption. And he uses defilement. We're going to talk about that a little bit. He knew through the prophets and through the scripture that Christ was going to be born. He knew how Jesus was going to live. He knew why he would die. He knew also that Jesus would rise up and destroy the power of his own kingdom. And how Jesus would have the power and the keys of death and hell. 
And it was his purpose to wipe out the royal bloodline of Christ before his birth. You see, it's very important when you're talking about kingships, when you talk about bloodlines. Especially in Israel, because they knew that the Messiah was coming through the bloodline of David. So they had to keep that pure. In fact, you had to be able to prove your bloodline up to six generations. Because that's how careful they were. Because everybody knew that the bloodline of the Messiah or the bloodline of Christ was coming through the bloodline of David. And the devil felt, if I can corrupt that, if I can defile that bloodline, then I can, I can accuse Christ of not being the Messiah because he didn't come through the bloodline. And thereby, I can have an effect on Calvary. Inspiring the people to bear worship, he planned to corrupt, degrade, and dehumanize. He felt if he could interrupt the bloodline, the rights of kingship, he could accuse Christ of not being a descendant of David. You ever heard the term that the apple doesn't fall, fall from the tree? Well, the devil had caused Israel to sin. They were worshiping Baal, they were worshiping Astra. But that's Israel wasn't the one he really wanted. He wanted Judah. Because it was through the line of Judah that Christ was to come. So what he did was he practiced on Israel through Jezebel, causing them to sin, a great sin. But what he wanted was Judah. So after he had his practice session, now came time for the real thing. And he wanted Judah. So what he did was he inspired Jezebel and Ahab to make a, a union with Judah. You know they used to do that, kings used to do that, they used to unite kingdoms through matrimony. Well, Jehoshaphat was king of Judah. He had a son, Jer uh, uh, Jerome. And uh, the son fell in love with Ahab's daughter, Athaliah. And so they put together a union to try to unite again the two kingdoms, the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. And, they, and the devil wanted to unite them together under their worship and astral worship. Now, Athaliah was a very beautiful woman. She was the daughter of Jezebel, and she was exactly like her mother. In fact, she was probably even worse. She had the ability to flatter a man, to make him feel strong and manly. She knew how to charm him. She knew about enchantments. She kept her body sweet with perfume. Ellen White says that she dazzled Jehoram stole his heart, and it wasn't long before she turned him from God to Baal. Now, when Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, died, the kingship passed to Jehoram, who was already married at this time to Athaliah. You follow me? You all together? The first thing she did after Jehoram became king, was to convince him to kill all of his brothers. Every single one of them. So that Jehoram was the only one left. Then she called. She calls him to kill his brothers. Then she calls him to worship there. This is the actual picture of Baal. So Israel was worshiping an idol made out of stone. This is the worship that Athaliah caused Jehoram to worship, and ultimately all of Judah. But they didn't stop with Baal. They went to the sacred groves. And in the sacred groves, they set up Astra. And it was here that they worshiped Astra in the groves. So they have 
Baal worship in the temple, and Asherah in the grove. And all of Israel began to sin a great sin. God was unpleased. He was not pleased with what was going on. First, Israel was all wrapped up in it. Now, Judah. But it was the devil's plan to corrupt God's people so that he could stop what he felt was the bloodline and to interfere with it so Jesus would not be able to do the work that he was designed to do. Through her influence, Jehoram had some serious problems. But God was not to be messed with. What God did was he smoked Jehoram with a disease in the bowel. Terrible disease. And for two years, he had the runs continually until the point that he died. We don't mess with God. So when he died, Athaliah, son, ruled. He only ruled one year. And God killed him. So that left her in charge. Athaliah was queen. And the first thing she did when she became queen was to destroy all the remaining seeds of David. She killed all of her grandchildren and children. And she didn't stop there. She thought and she looked to find anybody that had any blood whatsoever of David. She killed them. God knew this was going to happen. So God, what God did was he made arrangements for someone, the, uh, 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 the sister of Jehoram, to steal the baby child out of the nursery. And they took the child and they raised him in the temple. But you know what? This is not the first time the devil was killing babies and families. Remember in Egypt? He tried to stop from, uh, 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 Moses because he knew that God had to deliver, to deliver his people. He tried to stop it then. And when he couldn't stop it in the wilderness, he caused them to worship the golden calf to cover up and defile themselves. Notice what he does, murder, corruption, and defilement. And it wasn't the only time he tried to get Jesus the same way. Did he not try to kill all the babies two years old and under? The devil has a problem, and he likes to kill. Now, He's messing with our children today. His purpose, don't forget, murder, corruption, and defilement. He is looking to destroy God's people even today. I'm sorry, I, I hope you follow me. I had to cut some out because I was going to be up. We're going to be done by 1230. But he's actually messing with our children today. He uses movies. Have, when was the last time you saw a good movie that did not have some kind of spiritualism in it? When was the last time you saw a TV series that wasn't talking about ghosts and zombies and the dead and ghost whispers and dead whispers? When was the last time? Every time you turn around, this is what you see. And this is what the devil is trying to do He's trying to reach our young people and destroy them and to corrupt them. Now notice, why was it that the devil are going after our young people? Because he could not get Christ. Since he couldn't get Jesus, he's trying to get all of those who are sons and daughters of God. So he's after us. And he's after us and he's trying to mess with us, to defile us, and to corrupt us. Video games. There were over 500 video games that I saw that were demonic in nature. Over 
Father is it? And these are the games that our young people are seeing. I'm not saying they're playing them. But every day you turn around, you see them. Dark of the demons. Angels and demons. This is what we see. This is what our young people are seeing. There are games that actually affect the behavior of our children. And of us. You ever heard of the, the, the game Dungeons and Dragons? Well, Dungeons and Dragons is a game of role playing. You actually role play being demons. And it gets to the point that it begins to affect how their behavior is. Anybody ever heard of board, the Ouija board? A Ouija board, you're actually contacting the demons. Literally. You, you hold the thing there and you say something and it moves by itself. It's just a way of the devil trying to control and then ultimately defy. That's what he's about. Music. So much music now. Where the demons hide. This is the kind of music you may not even know what they're listening to. The music is just as bad as the games. Just as bad as the, uh, the movies. This is the kind of stuff that we are dealing with, our young people are dealing with, that we are dealing with. Why? Because the devil wants to control. Gay and lesbianism. Transgender. This is what our young people see every day. Get this. The author asked, Courage Award was given to Bruce Jenner. Excuse me, Caitlin Jenner. This is the kind of defilement that we see every day. We talk about it, we see it on TV, and believe it or not, it has an effect. Why, why is the devil bringing this to us? Remember the Bible says that as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be. It's that way now. Now, the amazing thing is that they had people that could give this award to. They had soldiers who had lost their limbs in battle. They were up for the awards. And what do they do? They give it to a transgender who had nothing better to do but to change his sex. The devil is looking to control the mind. When he can control the mind, Ellen White says, any individual who does not give their mind over to Christ, that the devil will take that mind and control it to suit himself. If all young people are not thinking, if you are not thinking, if you are not praying, if you are not working together with the Lord, your mind is going to be controlled eventually by the devil. There's only two controls in this world. Either you with God or you with Satan. There is no middle ground. He is trying to control you and me. He's a slippery rascal. He watches us. Otherwise, says, every moment of the day, the devil tries to kill us. Every moment. Now, what's the moment? One scientist says, if you take a moment, a second, divide it up into a million pieces, one of those pieces is a moment. So, if that is true, then a million times a second, the devil wants to kill you. And if it were not for the hedge of protection that God has, we'd all be wiped out. If he could, that rascal would bring down this burden on top of all of us. Because he's about murder. He's about control. He's about defilement. What do I mean by defilement? Let's talk about that just a brief moment. 
when the devil begins to control you from the outside, there comes a time when you don't stop him, then he gets inside. We call it being possessed. That is defilement. His purpose, not only to control you, ultimately to defile you. Why? Because when you become defiled, then you are lost. That's what he wants. His purpose is to kill us as painfully and as cruelly as he can. You ever known anybody that was possessed? You can't control your time. You eat things. You eat people. Literally. Why? Because the devil's about murder. Devil worshippers are involved in murder. That's part of it. Human sacrifices is part of the worship. I had a, I had a, I had a guy I met in school. Him and his wife were devil worshippers. And he came to me and he says, I believe, I know there's a God. I said, well, how did you know? He said, because I know there's a devil. He began to tell me all the stuff that they did. He told me, he said, you know, a lot of these kids on the back of milk cartons, he said, they they kidnapped. And they would cut parts of their bodies off, and everybody had to eat part of it in the ritual. Because human sacrifice is a part of the devil's plan. Death, control, and defilement. Athaliah almost succeeded in her scheme to destroy the bloodline of David. But God saved Joash because the bloodline has to be preserved. She didn't know it, but he was preserved. God had his aunt to bring him to the temple. And the high priest hid him for six years. At the end of the six years, God said, it's time to anoint the king. So the high priest called five captains of the army. He explained to them the situation. And God touched the hearts of those soldiers. And they believed what the high priest said. And they began to make a scheme and a plan. The high priest says, this is what I want you to do. On the Sabbath. I want the army to come to the temple. I want to place one third of the priests, arm them with swords, and they surrounded Luther Joash, six years old. They surrounded him to protect him. Then they said, we want to put a third of you on the outside to stand behind the army in case something happened. Then they had the army surround the entire temple. Shoulder to shoulder, arm to arm, with weapons drawn. And they brought Joash. And Jehoiada, Jehoiada, excuse me, Jehoiada anointed him with oil and placed the crown on his throne. And the people shouted, long live the king. While Athaliah heard it. Even though the temple was a good way from the palace, they were making so much noise, word reached her that the rightful king had been anointed. The Bible says she got angry. She got mad. She called for the army, those that were true to her. And she gathered them all together, and she was going to the temple to destroy all those in the temple, and anyone that had anything to do with the anointing. But she was so angry. She couldn't wait for the army. She led the army. They weren't quite together, but she went on her own. And the priests had given instruction to the army that when Athaliah comes, they were to let her in. 
and to keep everybody else out. She marched up to the temple without even looking back. She didn't know she was by herself. She thought the army was with her. She walked in, they opened up, let her in, and she saw Joash standing there by the pillow. And she was so angry, she hollered to her security guards who weren't there. Kill him! And anyone has anything to do with it. Then she turned around and noticed she was by herself. Then the priest said to his guards, take her to the valley and sell her. Now, the priest's guards, they didn't, they weren't exactly obedient. They couldn't wait. They took her to, to the barn where the mules were and she was in there. They took her body. You know what? If we allow ourselves to be beaten by the enemy, you know what? God will ultimately win out. It, it may seem that the devil has control. It may seem that he's winning. But trust me, when God has had enough, he has had enough. You know, our bloodline goes all the way back to Calvary. When Jesus died on Calvary, it gave us the right to be sons and daughters of God. We no longer have common blood coming through our veins. We have holy blood coming through our veins. And that's why the devil is trying to corrupt us. That's why he's trying to defile us, because he knows we have holy blood. And so he's doing nothing, leaving no stone unturned in order to defile us. But you know what Ellen White says? The only secret to not be in control, the only secret to not be in defiled is through prayer and Bible study. You want to have power over the enemy, then you've got to develop neology. Neology. Stay on your knees. Study the word of God, because there's power in the word. You want to avoid the defilement, the control. You want the angels of heaven to guard and protect you and yours. Then you've got to put some effort to it. And that effort comes through prayer and Bible study. As simple as that is, that is the key. You know what? God never gives us super hard things to do. He didn't give Adam and Eve a hard test. He don't ask us to do the impossible. The simple thing. Prayer, Bible study, is enough to save your soul and possibly your family. Because as they watch you, how you live affects the children. The Bible says, living in iniquity from the fathers to the third and fourth generation. That's what happens. How you act, your children are going to act. You love the Lord, serve the Lord. They will see it, and they will love the Lord and serve the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, let's do that. It's 12.30 now. I'm going to end this message. And then we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to turn it over. We're going to, you know, what we're going to do, we're going to have the benediction. Because what will happen is, in case we have to meet, we're going to, we're going to have the benediction, then we're going to open up the general conference session. So I'm going to ask that you would bow your heads now as I close this session. And I know Terrence is scheduled to do the benediction, but I'm going to do it. Eternal Father, Lord, briefly, I hope I didn't cut out the wrong part. But Father, we need, we need you more now than we ever have before. Because all young people are living in the worst time of their life, in the worst time in history. We are in a battle. We are in the war. And the war is not just over us. We are involved. And although we know the enemy 
is powerful. Lord, you are all powerful. He can only go but so far. And Father, you have given angels to protect us and to influence us. So, Father, through our prayers and through our studies, we ask that you would reach us. You would mold us. You would shape us to be like Christ. And may our influence spread far and wide to our children, to our siblings, to our parents, to our neighbors, to our poll workers, to the government, to whoever comes in contact with us. Let it be known to every demon that is listening today that we are your children saved by the blood of the Lamb. We will worship you. We will serve you by your grace and by your mercy. Let it be known that we will serve you forever. When all is said and done, when Jesus rolls down that censer and says, He that is unjust, never be unjust still. He that is filthy, never be filthy still. But he that is right, and he that is holy, never be righteous and holy still. That is what we look forward to. Bless us to be in that number when the saints go marching in through the gates of the new Jerusalem. In the precious name of Jesus, we say, Now, Father, as we leave this place, some of us will be leaving, others will be saved. We ask for each other mercy. And we ask, Lord, that you bring us back again, that we will continue this worship and your praise. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen.